name's Nick. He's been with Christ for 23 years, and he wants to share his testimony, his experience, so you can be saved also. Right on. Right on. Yeah, uh, my name's Nick. I'm from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. And uh, I wasn't always into Christ, into Jesus. I was into other things and uh, probably some stuff that you guys have also been through. Um, but I got saved in 1997. I got totally saved, totally transformed. Amazing. Uh, but I grew up in a small town here. And, uh, you know, where we grew up, it's kind of like, well, if you're French, then you're stamped as a Catholic. You know, it's just an automatic thing. Culturally, it's like, okay, you're French, you're Catholic. There you go. And uh, so I grew up in religion. And um, my mother wasn't extra religious, but, you know, that was the religion of the day, if you will where we were from you know being french and all that and uh but uh i've had some experiences in my life that uh, i can you know look back on and see wow man god was really looking out for me and um uh, one of those experiences is when i was four years old i was hit oh, by wow. a car and uh yeah man um i was in a little town called chelmsford and uh i was going across to, to see my friend and uh, my brother was like, no, no, don't go, because it was all this traffic, right? But I wasn't thinking traffic. I was thinking, hey, man, I want to go see my friend, right? And uh, so I didn't listen, and I got hit. And uh, so I was I was gone for about 20 minutes, and my aunt had, ch had checked my pulse and everything. The pulse, nothing. Nothing was flowing, you know, but I got hit on one side, and then I, I landed on the other side of my ears. So I had damage to my ears, too, uh, after that experience but anyway so i was pronounced dead and my mother you know she called the ambulance and all that but then she did what any good mother should do she got on her knees she prayed yeah. and she said god please you know please don't take my son and uh, it's at that time that she says that she had a vision from jesus she saw jesus hanging on the cross and jesus spoke to her and said daughter your son will live and he will be safe and as that's happening what um in the 70s, there was a movement, what they, they called like the Jesus movement, and that sprung forth out of the out of the states, you know, all the hippies and all that. They started to get saved, and they started to come to Jesus, massive movement, people getting healed and people's lives being changed, you know. And so that, that kind of came up to Canada, and it hit the Catholic churches at the time, what they called the Catholic uh, renewal movement. And uh, so my aunt my, and my uncle, they, they believed, you know, in... Because it's not every church that believes these truths, that God still heals the sick, that God can still use us to heal the sick, raise yeah. the dead, cast out devils. The power of prayer. And so, wow, that's, that's right, man. They're even alive. A lot of people that got hit by cars when they're young, they have like broken bones and not able to walk for the rest of your life. That's right. That's, incre that's incredible. Totally. Yeah. Like I had damage when I came out of this thing. But so what happened is my aunt, my uncle laid hands on me in the name of Jesus, like the Bible says we can do. You know, and the Bible says anybody who believes in God can do these things. So they were crazy enough to believe it. And they laid hands on that little kid. And uh, so as they're praying, the ambulance gets there. And uh, <laughs> the the emergency response team, they, they look at her and they said, ma'am, you can't do that. And she looked at them with authority. She said, trust me, I know what I'm doing. And they said, okay. So there she is praying for me in the name of Jesus. And then it's right there, bro, that I came right back from, from where I was at, you know, having an experience with God in heaven. It's right there that I came back to life and I let out this big cry, you know. So then they hooked me up after that and they brought me to, to the hospital. And it uh, turned out that I had problems with my ears after I had to have ear tubes inside. And um, my jaw was also wired shut for, I, don't, I think it was like a couple months. And all I remember as a kid is like blender foods, like like there's no tomorrow. Everything was in the blender, you know, and I couldn't open my mouth. But uh, that was healed too. And uh, But I still had the, the tubes for quite a few years. Um, so I say that to say that I knew that God existed, but I didn't know him. You knew God existed, but you didn't know him. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's like knowing about somebody as opposed to knowing somebody. Because you can read somebody's book too, all about the guy. And you can know all about that person. But if I was to say, hey, Matt, you know, uh, 
let's say, I don't know, some rock star or something said, hey, Matt, you know, do you know this guy? Does this guy know you? If I called them up and say, hey, do you know this Matt guy? He's like, Matt who? And you're like, well, I read all about your book. I know everything about you, you know, but you don't know him. It's a big uh, difference. Your relationship with uh, God is different than just knowing about God. Wow. Did that's right. I was and that's ask, the... like, you, so you remember like uh, this happening or you remember like, afterwards in the hospital? I remember just little bits here in, in there, you know. I remember more after when I came back from the hospital, and uh, you know, because it's really, it was really traumatic. Um, but I remember coming back, and I remember my my jaw being wired shut for for a long time, uh, you know. Like I, I believe that God yeah. will save, give everybody a chance in life to be saved when they are supposed to die, and uh, He's really forgiving. Yeah, he's really like uh, kind of give back to God and. I understand that like he's king he, he controls everything that's it yeah and you know sometimes Matt it takes a lot it's, it takes a lot for us to come to that point you know because every one of us in some way shape or form always like to think hey man I'm king over my life or I'm queen over my life you know I'm in control till till things like that happens and then you see how weak you really and how frail you really are as a human being you know yeah, I was watching this documentary about this uh, 100-year-old World War One veteran, World War Two veteran. He says it's not like uh, the bullet that saves you; it's God that saves you. It's all about like, wow. uh, yeah, like God has a plan for everyone's life, and I think that was like uh, yeah, I'm telling you, you're about you're meant to save other people, and you're because you're, you're really good with deliverance prayers and uh, praying for people. I help out a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things God has brought me into. So to to get there, of you know how I got saved and stuff. What happened the next year after that is another tragedy. My my father took his life, and uh, I was five years old. And so I came down and I saw my father hanging, you know, in the garage. So as a kid, you know that really damages you. You don't understand all that as a kid, but you know it damages you. And so I walked around in life always seeking for that father's love, always seeking for, you know, that 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 approbation and that that validation from from a male figure like that, you know. So that caused me to be attracted to people that knew my dad and stuff like that and to want to party with them and all that. So I could hear the stories about my dad and, you know, the the memories of my father and stuff. And so I began drinking when I was uh, I was told I was eight years old when I first began, you know, I had my first drink my first real drunk and then from there it just you know every year it grew worse and worse and worse and i got deeper and deeper into it and uh you know i became an alcoholic and then through that it was the drugs also and you know some some stuff i i did back then i don't even know what it was i just knew oh what did you do this yeah you survived yeah okay man i'll try this that's (laughs) devastating for a kid to go through that at a very early life yeah. yeah. And it's like a lot of other guys out there, man. We're looking for the father's love, looking for the father's heart. You know, there's there's stats that show, bro, that uh, over 87% of males that end up in jail were either fatherless or had absence to fathers that were not there for them. And that's how important it is to have that father's love. Uh, uh, father figure and like right. you... you um like you, uh, Christ is uh, he, being your father through all this when you got saved. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I wound up in in uh, I moved in Ottawa in 1996 and I wanted to change a life. And so even even when I was in my sinful ways, doing all my partying and being with different girls and stuff like that, I was still praying. I would still pray. Yeah. And. and and I would I would always get this kind of gut feeling, if you want to call it that, that if there was trouble somewhere, that I'm not to go there. And, and sure enough, I would always hear when I obey that gut feeling, you know, which I know today was God speaking to me. But when I'd obey that, and then, you know, I get a phone call the next day, dude, man, it's a good thing you didn't come to that party. All the cops showed up, and this fight happened and broke out, and all this trouble, and and it was like it was God looking out for me. And God looks out for us, even when we're in our sinful ways. And even when we say, you know, like that F you, Jesus, get in the back seat kind of thing. I'm doing my own life, doing my own thing. He still watches out for us and he still stretches out his hand for us. Right. So I end up in Ottawa and I I was there to start working and stuff like that. Get away from the stuff I was into. 
But it did take long. I got right back into the drugs, right back into the, the drinking and the partying. And so one thing, you know, turned into another. And I had a really bad Coke experience that time. You know, I had done crack a few, quite a few times and, and all that other junk that came with it. But it took that. That's what it took to actually bring me to my knees where I could finally recognize that, hey, man, I'm not the God you are. Right. And so after that real bad experience, I, I wound up crawling down the hallway at the uh, at, at the apartment where I was staying. And I and I opened up the door, went into my bedroom. I got down on my knees. I was already, you know, and I, I got down beside my bed and my cry to God was help. You know, it wasn't all the rosaries. It wasn't all the Hail Marys. It wasn't all the, you know, oh, our father, this. It, no, what it was is when I finally surrendered. He heard the sound of surrender. He heard the sound of, of that, that genuine surrender with God. And so I cried out and I said, God, I need help down here. Not just as a fairy tale way up there in the sky. Oh, you watch over us. That's so cute. No, I need you for real, yeah, God. For... You see? Wow. Right? And he wasn't insulted by that. Right, he didn't push me away and say, "Oh, what kind of a prayer is that?" You know, like refine your prayer, then come see me. No, he heard my heart. That, like you, that's what like he heard. Your breaking point, and you just like uh, when you're surrendering yourself. And that's when like God like uh, spoke to you. That, like uh, that's right. That that's when you know that i said god i said lord i give you my spirit i knew as much to say that as i was also studying shamanism and stuff like that and i was practicing that and uh practicing the medicine wheel I was getting into that and because of my native roots and uh <clears throat> and so um I cried out, and about a week later, I meet this evangelist guy, right? This guy who dared to speak about Jesus publicly. Now, we know in the public on the streets, you can talk about anything. Uh -huh. You can talk about who shanked who and who killed who and who did what last night, and everybody's interested and everybody's listening, everybody's into it. But you mention that right. name Jesus, right? Some yeah, happens. that's true. Why is that, right? It's the one thing you're not allowed talking about. People get really mad and... Uh even like in the name of Christ, it's like the demon in them that gets a mad, like you're saying with... That, that's right. Because the last thing the devil wants is for you to get saved. Mm -hmm. The last thing the devil wants is for you to know Jesus Christ, right? And I've come to understand that, that is just because it's Jesus that died on the cross for us. He took all of our sins, all our sickness, all disease. He beat death, hell, and the grave right there at the cross, man. The grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't hold him. And he rose again the third day triumphantly over all the powers of darkness. And it says that he's got the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every wow. knee's going to bow every tongue's going to confess that jesus christ is lord every power of darkness every power you know sometimes we talk about the illuminati and the wicked and evil things they do and as much as they are evil and wicked everything they do and everything yeah. they worship and everything they give themselves to has to bow yeah. to the name of jesus that's of, and that's why you know, that, that's one of my favorite scriptures you told me it's like uh, in the, uh, at the end every knee will bow into jesus and uh will have to confess that he's right. lord he's king uh, so I've been making a lot That's of right, uh, YouTube videos recently about like the Illuminati, and I mentioned in my previous videos that you can know everything about the Illuminati, but like they won't save you. It's only Christ that could save you. And, Amen. Uh, That's right. He man. told me uh, like when Jesus died on the cross, that's when like evil lost, and like every uh, yeah. that was the end of uh, evil and death, and the devil just uh, can never win after that moment. That's right, and it's pretty wild the way the Bible says it. It says that he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it meaning that it's like he went right into death itself right into hell itself and he made a spectacle of them you know he made a like a joke out of them man like and and, and he says you see because this is what happened here's what happened you know in short when adam and eve submitted to satan to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right they could they had access to the tree of life which is above the knowledge of just good and evil because good and evil good is good but it's not perfect and see, but Satan deceived them into saying, hey, let no, never mind that tree. Come and eat of this tree. And if you eat of this tree, you're going to be like God's. And it was a lie because God had already made us in his own image to become loving just like him, to, to, to do the things he does, right? But anyway, so... So it's like he, they, it's like they handed over the keys to Satan. Meaning what? When you surrender to sin, you're basically saying, okay, Satan, go ahead, rule over me. I'll be your puppet now. Right? Because you subject yourself to that. So that's what happened. But when Jesus died, it says in Revelation 118, he says, I'm he that lives and was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And behold, I hold the keys of death and of hell. 
So when Jesus died, it's like he went right into hell itself, right into the corridors of hell. And he went right up to Satan saying, okay, I want those keys back. Yeah. Those are mine. And he took the keys back. What does that mean? It means that Satan and all of the wickedness and the darkness can't get a hold of you anymore when you surrender to Christ. Yeah, I know. You get the keys back. I know Jesus changed the whole game. He just changed the whole life and the whole world. When Jesus came, it just completely like everything was so different. Where like that's when he saved the world from our sins. And uh, you can that's right, man. Salvation was a lot different in the Old Testament, and it's not the same as it was now. And, uh, right, because in the Old Testament they were waiting for the coming Messiah. They were waiting for the promise, the promise of God. Now it does say that the prophets who believed in the coming Messiah, these people died in faith and in hope, and they were justified by their faith in the coming Messiah, right? Not by their own works, because because the Bible says, you know, some people say, well, oh, that one deserves her heaven. Well, you can't win your way into heaven because mm -hmm. there's no good earthly work that you can do to deserve heaven. It's a gift that's given to us and that's the cool part about it right romans 6 23 says that the wages of sin meaning the paycheck for sin the end result yeah. of sin is death right. it's like you work for satan all your life and you do all the sins you want and he's like yeah here you go here's death you know and then you suffer for hell you know forever and ever i mean no, that's not a good not not a good contract yeah. but but then it says the gift of god is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So the wages means you got to work for it. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, man, but I'd rather have the gift yeah, than the have the wages. Salvation. Right. Yeah. So what happened um, when I was, when I cried out to God about a week later, I'm downtown, there's this preacher, he's preaching about Jesus, and he's just giving her, man. And he's like, God, save this ex-military man from crack cocaine, from suicide, and from abuse, military abuse, and God can save you also. And he's talking about Jesus dying on the cross for us. He's talking about the fact that without him, we're all sinners. Every one of us, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, that none is righteous in their own, nobody. But but that through him, we can be saved. We can be redeemed. We can be restored to God. And I'm listening to this. And, you know, in my brain, I wasn't really understanding what he was saying, but it was touching my heart. Yeah, your heart was listening. That exactly. And that's what God looks at. Not how much we know up here, but it's here. Because it says it's with the heart that man believes unto righteousness. With your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Right. It's like when you walk down the aisle with your bride or with your with your lover. Right. You say, I do out of your mouth because you really believe you want to be with this person forever. And that's like a contract when you're doing that. It's like you're bonding together. You're you're making an agreement together that you want to be with each other forever. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. And when we're saying yes to Jesus, that's basically what we're saying. We're saying we're yours now, Lord. We're yours. So I did that on the street. Long story short, he asked me if I wanted to pray and all this stuff. And like everybody else, you know, my walls were up on the inside and I'm thinking, oh man, some somebody's going to see me yeah. that I'm with the religious religious guy they're gonna think i'm religious you know and i meant to say well maybe not right now i was gonna stay like nah and it came out yeah okay yeah i'm like, okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm like oh no i gotta pray with them right and so the prayer was this is that the bible says that if you shall believe in your heart god has raised him from the dead and you confess jesus as your lord and your savior you will be saved you know if you put your faith in what he's accomplished and then you confess that and so I prayed and I asked Jesus into my heart. I asked God to come right into my life. The moment I did that, man, that's when I heard the voice of God. The moment I did that. So I went out for coffee with the guy. And we're talking, we're sitting down. And he looks at me, he says, wait, stop. I said, okay. He says, I see you playing guitar. And I see you playing really fast. And God says he's going to use that for his glory. And he says, I also see you sharing Jesus with people across the world. He had a vision so I, of you. Kind of like that's right. So I'm like, how do you know this? And and that's exactly it. He says, the Holy Spirit just showed it to me. So I had two thoughts in my head. I, the first thought was like, okay, the guy's a quack and he's just guessing stuff. And but the second thought was, if God really is God, then he can speak through somebody if he wants to. Right. And so I went with the second half of this. Yeah. First yeah. answer is not going to get you anywhere, but the second answer was actually what like saved you. You know, you're you have a big mission in, for God's path. You're uh, doing lots of deliverance prayers, and you're helping a lot yeah. of people out through uh, yeah. through Christ. 
Yeah, we're doing online stuff. I mean, before COVID, I was doing a lot of stuff like going on the streets and stuff like that and just sharing with people, loving on people, loving on what, you know, society would call the unlovables. And whether you're a drug addict, I don't care if you're a drug addict, if you're a Satanist, I don't even care if you're an Illuminatus, man, that, that if you, you know, God loves you, Jesus died for you, and anybody who repents and turns to God can be saved. It doesn't matter what your background is. God will not refuse you if you come to him in faith, if you come to him in repentance. The Bible promises that if any man will come unto him, he says, I will in no wise cast out. Sometimes we feel like, no, nah, man, this is not for me. I've done too many bad things. God wouldn't even want me. And that's not true, man. That's not true. He takes you just as you are and he changes you and he transforms you. It's like, uh, like the thief on the cross. He didn't like, he just confessed that, oh yeah, Jesus is my king. I'm going to be, I'm happy I'm with Christ right now. And he, he went to heaven and like, just from him like confessing and, you know, being with God. That's right. That's wild, right? Like the guy, he's guilty. He knows he's guilty. He's on a cross. And it, but look at that. Yeah. That's right. Look at the heart of Jesus, man. That look, like he's about to, he's taken everybody's sins, past, present, and future, every bad thing that ever happened in this world, all the suffering of this world, every, every sickness, every disease, every car accident, every overdose, everything. He takes it all on himself. And as he's hanging there, he's still... He looks at the guy beside him and he says, I tell you the truth. This day shall you be with me in paradise. Wow. Because wow. yeah. the guy acknowledged his sin and he said, Lord Jesus, today when you're up there, he says, would you just think of me? He says, I tell you the truth. This day you will be with me in paradise. Right. You know? he, was, he was happy. He was saved by God and being, he was happy. I know because the other um, thief, he was, like, he was like, well, if you're really the savior, then like, let's get us down from here. But the other yeah. one was happy and he was, he was uh, like honored to be with uh, God and just in that he was saved in minutes and it doesn't take like your whole lifetime even though if you live the life no. of sin God always is here to love you yeah so that's where my new journey began that's where I started to feel different walk different talk different I had such a desire for the word of God it was like unsatiable man I couldn't stop uh, it's like I was hooked on this it's like man it was so good because I knew it was the truth and it was transforming me Right. And and uh, opposite to what some people think, when you get into a relationship with Christ, you're not going to go crazy and insane and start doing stupid stuff. It's the opposite. He heals you. He restores you. He makes you whole again. And he heals those. Um, he healed those emotions, a lack of the father's love. When I discovered that God himself is my father and he loves me, totally transformed me. And I began to walk and talk with God and I began to have a relationship with them. And then, you know, people began to come from different places and to prophesy over me and to say, I see you doing deliverance. I see you dealing with high level witches and satanists yeah. and, I, and i knew i had that desire because that's one of the first things bro that really ticked me off when i got saved is when i realized that the devil had messed with me and my family and he was messing with them to deceive them to bring them to hell man was i ever angry and i said that's it man I'm, i want to be on this earth until i see the last soul get saved the last yeah. soul come to jesus christ Wow. <laughs> I know you see everyone's deceived and I know like in uh, on social media and TV shows, movies, you see how it, someone that looks saved, they look like a fool, they don't look like they're smart, you see like in The Simpsons and all those yeah, people right. seem like the, the religious person's the crazy one, he's the dumb one, he, has, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But they just, the, way they, the way they twist it, because the devil owns these uh, TV shows and like the Hollywood yeah, yeah I, I found that interesting. Like, I was never into The Simpsons because by that, by the time Simpsons was really popular, I was sa I got saved, so I, I you know, I, I strayed away from that. But I noticed every episode, every episode, they make fun of God. In somewhere in that episode, they will purposely make fun of God. And you got to scratch your head and ask yourself why. Who's behind this, and why are they, Why does it have to be in every episode? Yeah, right. Yeah, people don't understand like what it's like to be saved. They think it's like it's not like a, a thing. Like, oh, you're you're gonna you're a religious person, and you're not gonna be a popular person, and all this. It makes it like uh, it has, you know, like the way it is in society now. Like when you're saying when you're doing when you're preaching God on the streets, you can sit, talk about anything. When you talk about like Jesus, people are gonna like laugh at you and make fun of you. Yeah, because it's the the power of that name. Because uh, the devil knows, man. I really liked how you said in your one uh, live stream for Halloween when it's uh, 
people listen to rap music and they say, oh, I, I just listen to it for the beat, but they never say that about Christian music. Right. Even though it could have the greatest beat, it's like yeah. for some reason they're not attracted to that. Cause, right. Cause it's, like, it's the devil in them that doesn't like it. That's it right. Makes a lot of sense. But here's the good news, guys. For those that are listening, here's the good news. Is that the Word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, they overcame him, the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives even unto the death. So when you when you believe in God, you overcome the enemy. That's the only way to overcome Satan. That's the only way to cut the strings off. And, and, and it's very interesting that what the world calls freedom is actually what brings you deeper into bondage. Is actually what brings you deeper into things that are destroying you and destroying those around you. And what the world calls, you know, bondage or calls uh, not being free is the total opposite. I have never been so free in my entire life, man. I'm no longer governed by drugs, by alcohol, by the way whatever the world says about me. I don't care. Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, what's considered uh, to be successful and what's considered to be important in the world is like very materialistic about money and about drugs. You got to have a good job. You got to live in a nice house. But they never mention if when you're saved with, through Christ or with God, that's the happiest way. You know what I mean? Like uh, totally. Totally, because then you could be without anything and you're totally happy, man. Like I remember living by faith, just walking, having nothing in my pockets and just walking. And I was the happiest camper in the whole place. And and, and now, you know, I'm blessed with with things and, and I'm still just as happy because of him. And it's, you know, when I get things, when I get blessed financially, when I get blessed with, you know, guitars or whatever, it's bec I see it that, hey, man, my dad's blessing me. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Father, for this blessing. And that's what's so special about it. Because those things, you know, you 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 can try stuff those things in your heart and you're going to die trying because that car won't fit in your heart. Yeah. That house won't fit in your heart. It's not made. It's not designed for that. These are blessings, but we don't worship or idolize the blessings. Mm -hmm. We worship. worship the one, right? The creator, not the creation. That's right. And that's where people go off is when people start worshiping the creation even you know they start worshiping their wives their husbands their their family you know big family pride or racial pride or whatever religious pride you know like there's there's no greater oxymoron than to say i'm a christian and proud of it because the word of god says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall right as as believers were called to be humble but before honor is humility yeah, that's why uh, pride is considered the deadliest sin out of them all. And, uh, yeah, because like, that blinds you. And like we're, we're made in God's image. A lot of people don't understand that the devil is jealous of us. He wants to be like uh, be like us. And it was his pride through uh, looking at Adam and Eve that turned him into the devil. He got cast out of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, the greatest gift, guys, I've seen miracles, signs, and wonders, like amazing stuff. And I, I see this daily, you know, and just, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, this morning. Around, uh, yeah, it was this morning, this afternoon, sorry, this afternoon I was on with somebody and she had some spirits in her because she had gone through some stuff and we just prayed in the name of Jesus, cast those things out, commanded them to go like the Bible says we can. She was set free, you know, and, and the, the big wow about it is not just that, wow, I'm casting out a devil, but the big wow is that that person that was in bondage to her past, that she was carrying that, man, and that stuff, you know, everywhere you go, because when you've been abused, you've been hurt, then you see through those lenses and, and you're you're in bondage to the people that that have hurt you until you can forgive and release them let them go but when those spirits came out of her you know this big smile pops on her yeah. face and she's she's just so happy and she's giggling she's laughing because she can sense that freedom now that she's no longer a slave to her past you know and that's the greatest miracle the greatest miracle you know we've seen legs grow we've seen cancers get healed just wild stuff bro wild manifestations demons manifesting screeching through people all that kind of stuff you know but the greatest miracle is when one sinner repents when one soul comes back to jesus it says that's all feeling, of yeah. heaven yeah that's the best when of the you best get, man when you get somebody towards christ it's like better it's like uh better than money it's better than gaining stuff it's like you're saving yeah. the person's soul and you're they're coming to heaven with you 
I yeah, because you can't. That's right, because you can't put a price on your soul, man. No, Jesus says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his own soul? Yeah. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Well, I was just about to say that because a lot, a lot of rappers, they admit, like, oh, I sold my soul. I'm famous now. I'm rich. But, like, what is what is a man? But without your soul, like, what do you have? Like, you're, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah, because there's always a price to pay, man, when you're living for Satan. When you're not living with God, there's always a price to pay, and the devil don't play fair ever. Uh, you can't think that you can go in the devil's playground and play by your own rules. It doesn't work that way. This whole thing of I'm doing my own thing, it don't work that way. Because you're either on with God yeah, or you're with Satan. I was just also you know? about to say that you're not. there's no such thing. You can't be in the middle. There's no purgatory. There's either you're with God or you're with satan you can't just be uh even doing nothing is still considered like uh doing something that's right that's right and you know that fence that people like to sit on well it's the devil that put it there it's yeah, his fence it's his fence wow yeah that's, that's a good way of putting it there you can't like <laughs> You know, and that's why, you know, it says the humble, it says God gives grace to the humble, the proud he resists because the prideful people, when we're prideful, we think, ah, I don't need God. I don't need this. Right. We think we have it all under control and can take just one moment and where all your world falls apart and you realize, oh my gosh, like right now we're going through a pandemic. You know, people that own businesses that relied on their businesses, that relied on the economy right now, some of their businesses have flopped. And what are they going to do now? They got mortgages. They got a car to pay. They got a family to feed. And if you don't know God, where are you going to turn? Well, you know what? This has been a good, a good time to turn to God. I've, I've seen people that it's been years that they were resisting God. And this year they came to Jesus Christ. This year they came back to God. This year they surrendered their lives to Christ. Cause you see that everything on this world is temporary. And it will never, you know, Mick Jagger had it right, man. Rolling Stones, when he sang, I can't get no satisfaction. He's right. Your flesh, this thing here with all these outward things, you'll never be satisfied. You can have billions of billions of trillions. Look at Bill Gates and all the stuff he's buying and all these farms he's buying and all these projects he's doing and all this stuff and, you know, controlling people with some of the stuff he's doing. You think that man's satisfied? He's not satisfied. He can't stop because it's unsatiable, unsatisfactory. The things of this world the only thing you know i tell people you can put the whole world at my feet and say here you go if you just forsake god you can have all this i said man no this stuff can't satisfy me what i'm looking for this world can't offer it to me all right that's what it says uh, the bible says if you're a friend of this world you're not a friend of god something like that that's right uh i know even with covid like um like a lot of people have gotten closer to god through uh, this whole covid pandemic that's been going on i got i got close to god i started researching more reading more books and uh understanding what's happening in this world um, yeah that's right and, and it's funky it's all written already in the bible in the word of god these things are all prophesied they're all predicted you know and that uh, and what people don't understand though is and i know maybe we could do some future videos about this about spiritual warfare but they don't realize we're not fighting against flesh and blood that's not what we're really fighting against we're fighting against powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's what, you know, some of these people that we call the Illuminati and that, and some of these secret societies, that's who they are subjecting themselves to. So it's not even just the people, the bankers and all that, the people that are behind that. It's the entities that these guys are worshiping and and, hum and surrendering themselves to. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. It's not, we're not actually, it's not a battle. It's a, it's a spiritual warfare battle we're fighting. It's like the demons inside people that we're fighting. It's not like, uh, like, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. And it's it's wild because you, when you start walking with God, you start seeing how the enemy recognizes you, no matter where you're at in the world, and and they know who you are, you know. But the question is, do you know who you are? That's the big yeah. question, right? And that's where it's at. And that's why, you know, that's why I share what I share today. That's why I do what I do today. So people can understand and can know who they are because there's an identity crisis happening out there. People don't even know if they're male or female anymore, or they don't even know what their heritage or culture, they don't know. Not, they don't know. They're, they're having an identity crisis. Identity crisis. Yeah, that's when like, uh, the de uh, devils can take advantage of you at that point. And that's right. Uh, yeah, it's lots like I know all the stuff has been prophesied in the end, and uh, it's this whole spiritual battle. And people people don't even realize they have a soul. They don't realize like that they're why they're human that we're made in God's image. People think we're just like oh we're just a, a smart monkey. That's you know we don't have a soul. Like all these all these desires you have in your head of like sexual desires or you know what I mean all the other things you think about they're not your nat natural thoughts. Like they're coming from like 
like demons influence you even when you're sleeping too you can get a uh, yeah like, uh, yeah because yeah, when when you don't have jesus you know you don't have a covering and the devil sees you coming and he'll play you like a puppet you know and and that's when you you know you get into all sorts of different spiritual stuff all you know not everything that that shine not everything that glitters in the spirit realm is gold mm -hmm. not everything that says it's god or it's good is good you know you got to know who you are but this is why jesus came this is the good news why Jesus came. He says, I am the good shepherd. He says, I lay down my life for my sheep, right? When, when, I, when I look at, at Satanists that come to Jesus Christ and people that are really bound by witchcraft and all that stuff, you know, did, did Princess Diana, did the queen, or, or, or the goddess Diana, did, did, did she ever lay down her life for you? Would she lay down her existence for you? No. Would any of these gods, Baal, Baphomet, all these wicked entities, you know, we can go off naming names, but would they ever, have they ever laid down their lives for you? Yeah, would they go true. and die on a cross for your sins? No. Never. It's not anywhere, right? But that's what Jesus did so we can have a relationship with the Father to reconcile. He came down. This is the only religion that I know of all the religions of the world where the God becomes a man. Specifically, just for, just to, for our sins, yeah. for our sins, to give Himself for us. And I've challenged atheists on this. I've challenged people that that know about Egyptology and all that. I know of none of those gods that were worshipped, of none of those mythological figures that ever said that they were the God above every other God, and then come down, make themselves a man to give themselves. Not to get shot or get killed because, you know, they're having a squat with some other god or whatever. Or they then they get turned into a tree and all this weird stuff. But no, to literally lay down your life for your very own creation. Because that's how much you love them. Because you know that without that, they will never make it. But Jesus did. And it says, through his blood, we're cleansed from all sin. And I think that's where I, where we should maybe get at through um this video here is is so that you can know the viewer that you know there is a god who loves you man you know yes there's all these evil forces and all that stuff that's happening in the world and some of you guys are very educated in those things and I, you know i've done a lot of research on that stuff too but i see it from a biblical perspective and i see that there is one god that they are against these people are mm, they're not against true. muhammad they're not against buddha not against allah right you ever notice that yeah, they're not yeah. against new age not against enlightenment yeah, just, they are against jesus christ yeah it's because uh, christ is the only way to have it you see in like tv shows they always make they, they never make fun of buddha or muhammad or uh the hindu gods they, but they, they glorify the egyptian gods but they, they never they always make fun of christ That's right you know it's the right right one. it's like when people swear right they don't say ah yeah. insert name here they say oh jesus christ yeah. why jesus christ why 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 you know and it's, it's and a commandment so, not to use the lord's name in vain so it's one of the that's right important thing and, and right uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have lots of videos too coming up about like uh salvation deliverance uh the um, the new age deception uh how uh, other religions won't get you to heaven we're gonna have yeah, a, man that'd be awesome uh, you have a lot more experience than me and christ and uh, you're gonna be uh be really great having lots of more videos with you yeah you amazing testimony that's uh, incredible like not a lot of people go through that but i believe that the the more um the worse your life was the more um hard it is the more stronger person you'll become and the more uh like god has a bigger plan for you that you don't realize yeah yeah i always say that it's like i you know i tell people it's like satan should have never dared drug you through yeah. what he drug you through because when you do come to christ you become a wrecking ball against the enemy you become like a bulldozer man against the forces of darkness because you know because you've been there and then you recognize where it comes from and you recognize the deception of the enemy man i got goosebumps yeah. but i but maybe before we go we can uh make an offer for anybody that wants to know jesus Maybe we can say a little prayer if that's all right. Yeah, a prayer would be excellent. That would be great to end this off. Awesome. Amen. Yeah, so yeah. Jesus said something really, really profound, guys, and it's in John 14, 6. And people were asking, you know, where? what is the way? What really is the way? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man comes unto the Father but by me.
You know, and Jesus also says in Revelation 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand and knock at the door of your heart. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and have sup with him and he with me. So, you know, some of you listening right now, you might feel that tugging in your heart. You might feel like, man, I want to know this Jesus. I want to know this Jesus. I want to know what it's like to walk with him. I need that love. I need to get saved. I know I'm in my junk right now and I want to be free from this stuff. You know, and so I want to offer this prayer right now. If you just repeat with me as as you're watching just repeat with us right now and i want you to say this say father god father god i come to you just as i am i come to you just as i am i know that without you i'm a sinful man i know without you i'm a sinful man but i come to the cross right now but i come to the cross right now and i lay all my sins down and i lay all my sins down i repent from my old ways i repent from my old ways and i receive complete forgiveness and i receive complete forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus. That you love me. That you love me. And I ask you right now. And I ask you right now. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. And I surrender all to you and right I now. Surrender all to you right now. And I ask you. And I ask you. To lead and guide me. To lead and guide me. For the rest of my days. For the rest of my days. And I thank you. And I thank you for saving me. For saving me. And that I'm yours. And that I'm yours. Forevermore. Forevermore. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, that's uh, awesome. I loved your prayers. I, I always feel stuff off them, and it's, it's really great. You know, always, uh, you uh, impact people across the world with your with your deliverance prayers and everything. Right on, man. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. And I want—I just want to say to those that are listening, look, if you prayed that for the first time and you meant that with your heart, that's the prayer I said in 1997 on that street, on Rideau Street, Ottawa, Ontario. My life got totally transformed. And now Jesus is living inside of you. And the, the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now, man. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if, you, uh, if, if you want to contact Brother Matt, contact Matt, you know, if that's you and you just prayed that prayer and you know you just got saved contact matt or contact me on nick sari on facebook uh you can contact nick sari or nick sari trails of fire so nick sari s-e-r-r-e or nick sari trails of fire and i'd love to connect with you guys and encourage you guys yeah. and matt i want to say thanks man thanks for having me on your program awesome brother it was a really great video i'm going to leave all the uh, links to uh brother nick's uh ministry your facebook page your youtube channel so people, if people have any questions they can get a hold of you you have a, a lot of experience with christ and you know a lot but it was uh, yeah, it was, for it sure was great doing this video it was, i love it it was uh, going to be a great addition to my channel of uh, salvation through christ and uh, your testimony there right on it's great to connect again bro yeah